What's up? It's Ben from Mod Prep, and today's video we are going to talk about the top five recovery tips you can use for CrossFit. So this video is going to cover a lot of amazing things that you can do to help optimize your recovery if you're someone that does functional fitness or recovery. And the good news is it's not just me here on video. I'm with the wonderful Dr. CJ De Palma of The Movement Doctor, and then I'm also here with Dr. Justine Ward of Third Z, and she is a bona fide sleep expert, so we're very excited to have her here. Spoiler alert, that's one of the top five tips is sleep. But here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna start from least important and slowly but surely move to most important things that you can do to optimize your recovery. This video is gonna have a lot of great information. And as always, I have more free training that you can go download. If you stick around to the end of the video, not only will you get our most important tips for recovery, but you'll also get a special link where you can go download our ultimate guide to CrossFit recovery. And again, I'll share more about that at the end. So let's start this video with number five. Again, we're gonna go from five, four, three, two, one, one being the most important, five being not quite as important. And I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. CJ. We're calling this one passive modalities. What the heck does that mean? Uh, passive modalities, everyone would know them as foam rolling, Normatec boots, uh, E-STEM, Compex, Power Dot, ice baths, sauna, et cetera, et cetera, passive modalities. Basically, it means that something that you're not actively doing, something's being done to you. So uh, it's five on our number five on our list because it's it can be beneficial, but it probably isn't as beneficial as everyone has kind of thought over the time. Yeah, most people, uh, and I know this because I've been doing a podcast with uh, my buddy John for quite some time, and he runs the page Make, Make Wads Great Again on Instagram. A lot of times, like when people think recovery, all they think about is foam rolling right. or lacrosse ball or, oh man, I should really stretch more. That That is such a small part of what actually works for recovery. That's why we're, we're purposefully putting this last and prob it probably shouldn't even make the list, but it's something that a lot of CrossFitters tend to do. Right. Why could passive modalities be beneficial? I think that they can be beneficial in the sense of if you enjoy doing them and they, they will help what we call like sensory modulate so they just make you feel better right in general right, right. Just, if you feel more relaxed right. and, and and calm and less anxious after a massage then yeah. a massage could be good for you we want to take away the notion that soreness is bad and so that's where these things have kind of taken a role and then gone way over to the other side is that anytime that you're sore you feel you need to use them to prevent the soreness so something's wrong i'm sore i need right. to get rid of this immediately right. and so not d deep diving too far into that it's okay soreness is normal soreness is part of the training process and recovering etc it's, it's expected so think of them as an additive or a supplement to normal recovery points so the most important part is if you like it do it if you feel like you're dependent on it then it's no longer beneficial at that point okay. right so we want it to take us above and beyond we don't want to use them to get us to baseline if they help you mentally feel like you're recovering better or they make you feel more relaxed then they could be beneficial but the actual science doesn't necessarily show that getting a massage will help your muscles recover and repair faster is that correct Accurate. getting electronic stimulation or taking a sledgehammer and jamming it into your arm a thousand beats per minute is not going to help your muscles recover faster scientifically, correct? Yep. Okay, so if it helps you mentally, go for it. But spoiler alert, you can save a lot of money and a lot of pain yeah. rolling and being smashed if you avoid the passive modalities. So that's what we're gonna say. If you wanna learn more, again, we'll have more resources at the end of this video. But now let's move on to the fourth most important aspect of recovery. Number four is supplements. Again, this falls into the category of everybody wants to do it but it's not necessarily as beneficial as a lot of people make it out to be. But good news for you, in this video, we're gonna to touch on a couple supplements that could potentially help you recover a little bit better or faster. And for that, we're moving to the wonderful Dr. Justine. Talk to us a little bit about supplements. How could they be used to benefit us from a recovery perspective? So, I mean, first of all, it's thinking about supplements exactly as that, a supplement, something to fill in the gaps of things that you might not otherwise be able to get in a good diet. So the top three that I think have utility for most people are collagen, magnesium, and creatine. Okay, awesome. And then I also know that before we talked about protein too, a lot of people view protein powder as a supplement when really kind of it's also a food source. 
Yeah. Right, so that's like kind of a wishy-washy one. We'll touch on that in a second, right? Absolutely. Okay. And collagen itself is actually a form of protein. True. And yep. it's one of the reasons why I like collagen. And collagen, interestingly, also helps you to properly metabolize the other proteins that you're eating. Most people don't do what we call like nose-to-tail eating anymore when it comes to animals. So we're not eating cartilagey, collagen-y stuff in our diets. True. Although there is kind of a renaissance of that um, right now that's invoked. So like bone broth and mm -hmm. eating bone marrow and that kind of thing. And that can be really helpful. So if you eat tons of that stuff, great. Maybe you don't need a collagen supplement, but for the vast majority of us who are eating just kind of traditional meats and, and very, you know, conventional diets. Right, lean cuts of meat. Absolutely. Um, collagen is going to be hugely beneficial because we need it to support the healing and maintenance of our joints, all of our connective tissues, so like tendons, ligaments, the tissue around our muscles. That stuff tends to get a little bit damaged as it's supposed to do while we're working out, and then we need to repair those tissues, and collagen is a really great way to do that. Okay, fascinating. I mean, that's something that even in my other supplement video, uh, we didn't really talk about the connective tissue repair, but it does seem like there is some science to show that collagen could help you. Again, we don't have time to go super deep into the science, but uh, we actually do in our Recovery RX course. And like I said, I also have some free resources for you to dig deeper at the end of this video. Uh, let's talk really quickly about magnesium and then what was the other one? Creatine? Creatine. Okay, so magnesium. What, what's the deal with that? Why is that helpful with, with recovery? Sure, so magnesium is just massively important to your body. You have like 267 different enzymes that need magnesium in order to work um, for a wide variety of things. And we sweat out a lot of it while we're mm -hmm. training. So it's also important for electrolyte balance and it's one of the few that we won't get easily in our diet. Okay. So that's why supplementing with magnesium can be really helpful. Anyone who has issues with muscle cramps or twitching, you know, your legs twitching and stuff when you're falling asleep at night, that can be a sign you're not getting enough magnesium or you don't have a good electrolyte balance. Um, so magnesium's be really helpful in helping your system to calm down post-workout and come back to baseline okay. and then also creating that electrolyte balance and supporting all the systems that require it in order to work properly okay and one random tidbit that i know that i've learned in my magnesium research is you can't just go out to the store and buy the cheapest possible magnesium that you can find right because some some magnesium is less available for your body to actually absorb than maybe other forms is that correct yeah that is absolutely correct there's tons of different forms of magnesium um, magnesium citrate is the one that's kind of most often seen mm -hmm. and it can give people issues with like GI stuff mm -hmm. but some of the other forms of magnesium like magnesium bisglycinate and gluconate tend to have better absorption because they're attached to an amino acid and that helps your body to uptake and use them and then magnesium 3 and 8 is kind of a new one it's a patented MIT invention that's actually really great for your brain yeah. very briefly what can I know creatine helps me get stronger Right. What what else does creatine do? I mean, in terms of like a per, like I view it as I view it as a performance supplement uh, because it's been widely used in performance supplementation. How does it help from a recovery standpoint? Sure. And, and there's kind of overlap in why it's good for recovery. It's also why it's good for um, performance is that it really helps with your mitochondrial function and to help your energy systems to recover. So it's something that helps your cells to act more efficiently, which means when your body's going into its repair processes, it's going to have more resources to do that more efficiently. Now let's move on to the third most important aspect, and that is nutrition and hydration. Talk to me a little bit about the nutrition piece. Uh, is this CJ? Is this who, who wants to talk about it? Sure, I'll, I'll hit on the, okay. the the elephant in the room as far as big, which is just caloric intake. Oh, calories. Okay. Yeah, you just have to eat an amount of food to recover. If you're training hard, you have to consume calories. You got to consume a lot more than probably you're used to, right? Especially. Um, Anyone who's been in traditional dieting, this like 1200 to 1800 mark is sure. absurd and not okay for anyone over the age of 12. I mean, <laughs> it just really is that. I mean, if you're really looking at development of getting fuel in your body for the breakdown, muscle breakdown and, and glycogen stores depletion, like you need an overabundance of food in your system so that you can recover. And so getting in the amount of protein that you need and getting in the carbs that you need is going to be your driver to getting stronger, recovering faster, feeling better. And fats are important. I mean, I know, especially yeah. for women, uh, there's a, a minimum amount of fat, which we talk about in our no nonsense nutrition course, uh, kind of in detail, but like you have to make sure you're consuming at least some right. of all three macronutrients, protein, carbs, and fat. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line is, I think one thing that's really important to understand is that optimizing for fat loss is not the same as optimizing for health and performance, right? So like there's this, you, you have to be willing to, to shift your goals. If you're trying to lose fat and maybe that's how you're gonna get more healthy is to lose excess fat, then your performance will suffer because you're gonna need to operate at a slight caloric deficit. Basically, you will have less fuel in your car than your car needs. And thus you're gonna, you're gonna slim down. However, 
once you reach, um, like, like I think all three of us right now at this table, like we're, we're at a body weight that we're okay with. Mm -hmm. It's okay if we have a caloric surplus that's gonna help us recover more. So right. it's like, there's this ebb and flow of what is your goal, but the bottom line that we need to talk about from a nutrition standpoint is be sure to eat plenty of food to at least cover the amount of calories that you burn in that given day from exercise and then also just living, right? Your, your, your natural energy expenditure. Let's talk a little bit about hydration. Um, Justine, what do you wanna talk about there? Um, just keeping a really high level on hydration. If you're hydrated, you're gonna recover more quickly. If you're dehydrated, your body's gonna hang on to its stress response longer. It's gonna take longer to flush uh, metabolites and toxins out of your muscles, and your body's gonna have a harder time doing the processes that it needs to do in order for you to recover feel healthy and be ready to train again. All right, now we're gonna move on to point number two. This is the second most important aspect of recovery for CrossFit. What is it? Training design, training right? So what you're doing, design. right? Like what your training actually looks like. And so the problem with CrossFit and the traditional style of CrossFit is this high intensity every day, which is good for a lot of people for probably a really long time, but at some point it becomes not ideal, right? And so what we wanna talk about here is uh, a concept called stress recovery adaptation. And so basically once you stress a certain joint or movement pattern uh, or, or muscle tissue, you have a certain amount of time before that is fully recovered, regardless of what you do, mm -hmm. right? You can maybe waver it a little bit. You can optimize all the things we've already talked about. Yeah, and so that can help, but you have this concept of time that just has to happen, right? There is just a certain amount of time that has to go by for your body to actually get back to 100%, right? And that's like glycogen replenishment uh, or uh, CP, right? Nervous system, all of these things. That, actual muscle fibers need to yeah. physically repair right. themselves. Repair right. themselves, right? And then you have this nervous system adaptation that has to happen and you have to get back to the ability to fire, or quote unquote, fire on all cylinders. Sure. And so that takes time no matter what you do. So, so the, the points we wanna hit on is time, that once you do a really heavy deadlift session, you're not gonna be as effective at deadlifting the next day, no matter what. Now, you could still probably perform pretty close to 100% if you're doing all the things that we've talked about, but physiological things happen and you are just, you are in a state of fatigue after you train. The first thing we said was training design, your training should respect those things as well, right? So Monday, if you have a really high snatch muscle up session, you can't expect to have another snatch muscle up session the next day and be as successful, mm -hmm. right? And so then we see people at the CrossFit Games, that's a test. Is different, that's not training, it's totally right. different, right? And so you have to understand that when you're trying to optimize recovery to perform better, you have to take those things in, um, with respect to the body is fatigued from day to day to day, and your training should be adjusted as such. Is, is kind of the takeaway here, don't beat yourself up every single day? Yeah, don't test every day, right? Your training shouldn't look like the CrossFit games. All right, so when's the last time you went to the gym and said, I'm going to put 70% effort into this workout, or maybe hopefully your gym programs workouts where they specifically tell you not to move as fast as possible, but that's kind of rare. Yeah. Most of the time when you walk into the gym, they're like, I'm going to help the people who come to this class get really freaking tired. And that's like the, take, the good takeaway feeling. So if, if your gym doesn't program specific recovery days or workouts or deload weeks or things like that, then it could be something that you need to dig in deeper to. And our course, Recovery RX, will help dig deeper into how you can design your training like that, and we'll leave it at that. What else did you want to mention with this particular point? Um, like I said before, it's just time, right? You have a certain amount of time before you are back to 100%. So if you're taking those two things into consideration, what you're doing each day and digesting and accepting the fact that you're just not gonna, you're gonna be fatigued after you train, then I think you're gonna be on a good, uh, good direction to being, to recovering better between training weeks and things like that. So like basis. soreness and fatigue shouldn't always be looked at as like, this is bad, I need to get rid of this. It's like, no, you've, you gave your body the stimulus, now you just need time. And the last point, to help recover, right. right? And the last point, the most important, the reason you're all still here listening, most important aspect of recovery is sleep. We did it, he didn't say it, but it's because he doesn't sleep very well. So <laughs> Dr. Justine, you are a sleep Expert, I know because I've read your posts. Uh, that's why you are here in Denver right now shooting this video. Talk to us. There's so much we can go into and we will go into in, su in future videos, but talk to us. What are some of the most important takeaways that we can tell people watching this to take home about their sleep? Sure. So sleep is the time where your body recovers. I mean, from day to day, whether it's working out or, you know, 
fighting with your family or going to work, um, whatever your stress is, you accumulate that over the course of the day and then your body works really hard while you're asleep at night to undo a lot of that stuff and then to rebuild all of your pathways to be stronger so that you can put up with more the next day. Mm -hmm. And so sleep is our most important time anabolically. So if you're trying to build muscle, if you're trying to improve your cardiovascular health, that's the time when your body does that. Mm -hmm. There's kind of this idea that I think most people should ingrain in their mind if you're into fitness, which is that your workout's not over until you sleep. Mm -hmm. Because your body needs to integrate and assimilate all of that input and do something with it. And it doesn't do that during your workout or even in the short post-workout period. That actually happens while you're sleeping. In addition to that, for adults, it's pretty much the only time during the day where your body actually releases growth hormone. So from that anabolic, putting on muscle mass perspective, you want growth hormone and that only happens when you have good quality deep sleep. Yep. What are some things that people can do to improve their results from sleep? I mean, let's be honest, if you're getting less than five hours of sleep a night, yeah, like get more sleep, like that's not enough. Right. But there is a big variation between what's gonna be best for me, what's gonna be best for you. Everyone's a little bit different in their biology and the exact amount of time that you need to sleep. Mm -hmm. So that's something that you need to figure out yourself. And we live stressful lives where getting eight or 10 hours of sleep a night isn't necessarily feasible for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So versus just trying to get more sleep, one of the ways that you can improve your sleep efficiency, in fact, the best way to improve your sleep efficiency is to get consistent sleep. So to go to bed at the same time every night and to wake up at the same time every morning. Because sleep is like any other process in your body, and the more your body's primed for that or expecting it, the more efficiently you're gonna get into the processes that you need to get into. So if you go to sleep at the same time every day, your body's like, you know, Pavlovian dog, gets used to the fact that it's gonna do those processes at that time, and there's a lot of research to demonstrate that people who sleep consistent hours have better quality outcomes from their sleep than pretty much any other intervention you can do to try and improve your sleep. That's amazing. So it's, it's not necessarily a function of, oh no, I didn't get much sleep this week. I'm going to try to make up for it by sleeping 14 hours on Saturday. That's not necessarily nearly as effective as just if you can consistently turn down for sleep at the same time mm -hmm. and have your alarm set or, or be needing to wake up at a roughly the same time every single morning, that can help your body actually maximize those sleep hours? Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, and there's literature even to show that like those big recovery sleeps, they might feel good, but the benefit to them is actually pretty limited versus just maintaining your normal sleep schedule because you can throw yourself off and almost get like a jet lag or a social jet lag mm -hmm. from messing with your sleep when you're trying to do your recovery sleeps. So. So kind of some bullet point takeaways is like, if you are sleeping like a college kid, <laughs> you know, like yeah. if it's only like three or four hours a night, then chances are the answer are, is that you just need more sleep. However, if you're someone that has a, a relatively consistent schedule, uh, but for whatever reason, you're, you're, the time that you go to bed and wake up seems to ebb and flow, uh, if you can start focusing more on trying to go to bed at the same time and waking up at the same time, that can be more beneficial than anything. Absolutely, yeah. So there is so much more to go into, and we'd love to share all of that information with you. There are two ways that you can get a lot more information from these amazing minds here at this table, not including me. And that is number one, you can go to wadprep.com slash recovery, where I will send you the ultimate guide to recovery for CrossFit. It's a nice PDF guide that goes through some of the bullet points we talked about here and gives you some extra resources. If you want the ultimate full course on how to recover for CrossFit, including we go into a lot of wearable tech details like the Whoop and the Aura Ring, Garmin watches, Apple watches, all kinds of good stuff. And CJ talks about programming design. It's gonna be a phenomenal course. You can go join Recovery RX. At the time of filming, it's not out yet, but if you go and download that free PDF, you will be on the waiting list automatically. So I hope that you like this video. In the comments below, let me know what is one takeaway, what is one thing you learned in this video that you didn't know that you're going to apply to your specific recovery, whether you do functional fitness, CrossFit, or whatever. Really, all these things can apply to mm -hmm. any sort of sport or any sort of fitness that you're doing. So leave a comment below and let me know what is one thing you're going to apply, and then we will see you in the next video. Oh, oh, the bang. Oh, it's so good for me. I'm gonna barf. I'm gonna throw up. Oh, oh. yeah, gotta get the other so ass. This one. Oh.